Bravo! Hello, Stefan! Still practicing. <laughs> Hi, everybody out there in Horn Hangout Land. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, my guest today needs absolutely no introduction. Stefan, welcome. Finally! Finally. Finally. It took us a while. It did took us a while, but we have... It did took us a while. I've been speaking German. It did take us a while. My mother, who's watching, would tell me off for bad English. Oh, I'm sorry. My, <laughs> no, no, English, my, my, my English teacher would be watching today. Your know. English is better than mine these days. Um, we have lots to talk about. There's a lot of people online. You guys, you're amazing that you are watching from all over the place, from South Africa, from Melbourne. Handsome Tim is in Melbourne help, helping us out. Greensboro, North Carolina, Arizona, F1 Patrick, Dante in Bogota. Ta, Taiwan, okay. Osaka, Japan. It goes on and on and on. It's amazing. Do write us in and tell us where you're watching from and also tell us what you're drinking. We actually, where's our tea? Tea, please. Tea, please. <laughs> Paola. Tea time, Paola. Thank Meet you, Paola. Paola. Thank you, Paola. Paola is our academist. Go on, wait, wave it, wave it somewhere. Wave there. Wave, wave somewhere. <laughs> Wherever. Thank you Thank very you, much. Paola. How do you say, you're from Estonia, you say kipis in like in, like in Finnish? No, what do you say? Prost. Prost. Ah, oh, <laughs> okay, that's easy. Prost. Prost. <laughs> Tea we time. Don't have to, no, no. Don't have I've to also practice. got two of your favorite uh, uh, things that are very wicked. They, they would go really well with modern horn concertos, probably. Actually, don't, don't try them. In, put them in through the horn. That would be nice. Maybe one of the gummy bears. The gummy bears, yes. It'll take a while to get out. We are talking about um, modern day horn concertos today because Stefan is premiering um, Hans Abrahamsen's concerto. 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 Has it got a fancy name? No. No, no. Fancy just name. concerto. And that, what you played at the beginning, we just rehearsed for the very first time, literally about half an hour ago. Yes. And it's quite demanding, not only for me, but actually very demanding for the orchestra. And for the conductor. <laughs> and for the conductor, <laughs> yes. It has a lot of like tempo relations that are not easy to catch and really, really, really hard for, for, for the string players also. It's hard to count as well for us because every yeah. bar is a different meter. Yeah. It is like, yeah, the second movement especially because it is all like the triplets are the eight notes afterwards and then it changes the, the measures. And it looks like, like he's writing triplets, but actually then they're only eighth notes. It's, it was yeah, no, it's writing triplets, but then they change to be the six, eight, and then they change to be in the four, four, the eight notes. So it's like, and then back to triplets. So it's not so easy. But if I look at your part, and this is like, you've had quite a few commis commissions over the years or you've pr uh, done premieres. There's a whole lot we want to talk about. Any questions? that you guys might have um, about you know how you prepare how what, what's important for the modern day horn playing you know do get them in I'll do as much as I can I have so many questions for you too um, uh, yeah there's an awful lot going on here are you perfect you will get to see them all after the hangout you can see who, who joined in it's really uh, as long amazing. as I don't have to answer no them no not all, all of that's, them that's not all of word. them we'll do okay, our best yeah. now um, tell us a little bit the history about this concerto because you're premiering it this week uh, at the Berlin Phil and live on the Digital Concert Hall. Yes, and actually the planning of this concert um, was more or less five years ago because Hans had the premiere of um, his famous piece, let me tell you, what he wrote for Barbara Hennigan as a soprano and our orchestra and I knew that he was a horn player. Um, so he See, that, that's the that, thing. So, and I, I thought, you know, oh, actually this piece actually that he composed, let me tell you, beautiful. is a very, very nice, very beautiful piece that did win the two most, yeah, the two biggest um, modern composing awards, the Gravemeyer Award and the Sonning Music Prize. And I asked him if he, if he would be interested in writing a horn concerto. And actually, he already had a commission in 1970 something. And that was the time when he he didn't compose for a long time. He had to, he couldn't compose, and he didn't compose. And it wasn't. He said like that at that time, the, the time wasn't right. But then he was like finding that this like request was coming at the right moment. Perfect timing, and to be conducted by Pavo, your friend Pavo. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> he was funny. He had his head in the score today, and it was like woohoo! It was like a like a, a wild ride. Yeah. How would you describe this piece? Um. The thing is, it's very hard to tell after one rehearsal how it is because it is very hard to, for me, it's, I'm not a conductor, uh, part-time. 
Um, I was it is say, like I've seen you is, conduct. Yeah, but it's very hard to to hear to hear the piece from the from the score. Um, it's a very very short first um, movement that is only like two minutes, and it's mostly long notes, but on different fingerings. The same notes, but a lot of different yeah characters in the sound. Then the second one is is a rhythmical yes. Um, fasten your seatbelts, please. Uh, fasten your seatbelts for the orchestra. Not so much for me, I have to say. I'm, I'm very lucky I play um, along. It goes from quiet piano, but agitated to into a big storm. Um, it, is, it is a very colorful piece. It has a, a lot of different colors. It, it won't get boring listening to it. It's only 18 minutes, 17, 18 minutes. And dedicated to you. Dedicated to me, yes. And I'm very happy that we found because when I, the process from finding someone to compose a concerto is, of course, finding someone to finance it. And How does that work? Yeah. <laughs> ah, okay. Let's talk about that. Maybe if there's, there will be questions. Yeah, about yeah, that, there I'm will sure. be questions. Get your questions in, everybody. I stop talking and then ah, maybe actually, let's, let's... There's let's a good question already from mum. I think it's probably my mum. She says, <laughs> Stefan, does your doggy like the new piece? This is very topical because your dog, Lucky, I think is the most famous dog in the horn world. I think my dog likes contemporary music because he never actually complains except of stop notes. But that could be Wagner or Strauss or whatever stop notes comes along, it, he starts like for looking at me <laughs> and then one second later. So, for anybody that doesn't know what we're talking about, we have a short clip to show you now. Spiel Horn. <laughs> okay, so we saw Lucky playing the horn. Yes, he's very good Lucky player. also, he yowls like crazy when you play stop notes. Stop notes, yeah. yeah. And if it's more than two or three horns, then also going high, and then he, after a while he goes like complains a bit. <laughs> so what did he think? What does he think about when you're uh, practicing this sort of stuff at home? Um, the thing is, I'm not practicing this too much at home. Because <laughs> the neighbors, I, yeah, the neighbors. <laughs> I, I I believe my neighbors <laughs> prefer Mozart and Strauss, but um, I do bits of bits of it. But he never complains actually. Yeah. No, he's nice. That's sweet. There's a lot of people, um, everyone's just saying hello at the moment. They'll get on to the questions. Usually the best questions come, come like right at the very end of the hangout when it's time to go. Perfect. Um, but right now everyone's just saying hello. It's, I mean, it's really Singapore, Quebec, um, uh, Hamilton, Hamilton um, Truman, Trumansburg, New York, um, Middle East, Muscat. Uh, Konstantinos, uh, who made our mutes, is in Greece. Hello to Greece. Really quite incredible. Um, <laughs> Lucky is a star. Everybody liked that. Uh, Lucky really is a star. Um, but actually, you know someone called you a goat? Did you know that? Me? Yes. Yesterday on, on Facebook, when we publicized, it said Stefan is a goat. Is that a compliment? I didn't know I that. I take it as a compliment. I didn't, I didn't know that. I thought, oh, someone's being very rude. So I looked it up. Apparently, it means the greatest of all time. Ah. <laughs> so you're, you're a goat. You are the goat, apparently. Uh, I just thought, gosh, they're, they're referring to that series of videos, you know, when a, an <coughs> a, a goat <coughs> made all those, you know, in the middle of pieces. Bah, yeah, exactly. That one. Yeah, I'll, so do, I'll do one of them then <laughs> in the, in the so live. To so the hall. yes, you d <laughs> yes we did. What was that uh, donkey shot? In the digital concert hall, we have some great clips of your your recent pieces. In fact, the very first one you did here was the was, was the Hosokawa. Yeah. But a, we have a nice picture of it. Um, and uh, and Jakob, when you're ready, you could just play a tiny clip of that. We have a tiny mini clip of that. <laughs> See, this is one of the pieces that has been co-commissioned with two other partners, Amsterdam and London. So it was good to, you know, get people to pay for these concerts because usually one orchestra, for one orchestra, is a bit too too much. And I'm I'm very glad that, for example, for Hans Abrahamsen's concerto, we have again Amsterdam, this Satatax Martini. We have Seattle. We have Auckland. But not with us. 
I want a car. No, Who you no, want to of fly? course. And we have Japan <laughs> NHK. So yeah. um, it's it's really nice to have people that that come back in commissioning pieces. For example, Toshio's was the first one I've played in Amsterdam as a co-commission. And they asked me if I would have something else coming up. And I said, okay, I don't have at the moment, but what do you think? And then what came next? And I said, I said the next came Wolfgang Riem, and they co-commissioned the Wolfgang Riem together with Luzern. Yeah. So it was really nice to have people. You play that here in the chamber music. And, uh, I played with the Mahler Chamber Orchestra. Because I have to say about that one, Stefan, I, li I was in the concert, mm -hmm. I was in absolute awe of it, but I could never play it. <laughs> the Wolf got Wolfgang yeah, Riem concert. It's so yes. hard. Yeah, the thing is, uh, when, I, when I told him about the concert, he was very enthusiastic and he started writing. And then he doesn't, have, he doesn't write on the computer, he hand writes everything. And it's in C, so he writes scores, including the horn part. So at one point I received a fax, fax him, still fax, and all the Old machine days. came like 90 bars of score, and I looked at it, and from bar number eight to bar number 99, there was not one break. Oh. So I, I called him and said, Wolfgang, that's very nice, you're in the flow to write things, but <laughs> please, and I, I just like marked little bits where I needed a little break for my lips, but still, it's still quite demanding. That's the thing, we, you, these new co concertos are coming and we want them to be passed on to next generations for, forever. It's like, you know, Mozart and Strauss, we want people to play them. But that really is a really hard one. Yes, but believe it or not, the second Horn Concerto of Richard Strauss wasn't performed for another 20 years. Because it was too hard. <laughs> it is really too. It, it was at that time really too hard for the most yeah. of the players. So yeah. said no one really, really took it up again. Wow. Uh, th this is the only thing that worries me about modern day commissions is that sometimes it's so, um, so hard for the soloist that young people won't uh, won't touch it. Hawken Hardenberg had told me the same thing in his hangout. He said he, he's commissioned all these amazing concertos, but the students won't play them. Oh, but I mean, <laughs> see, for example, Ligeti concerto. What is hard to play? It's played more and more often now, and I'm sure the other the other pieces will be too. How do you do rehearse? Because that. I'm sure it doesn't have a piano reduction. It does not, but it will get one. Because we had a piano rehearsal yesterday with Holger Groschow, ah. and he actually played the piece from the score. <gasps> yeah, yeah, from, uh, the I gave it, score, The score is this huge, creepy thing behind us. As a, it's I can a, show Yeah, you can like, show us. You can show us, sure. Maybe it's show a bit. Enormous show a bit of it. Thing. It is like, yeah, if you want to show side read to this. To he didn't side read it. He, no, got, no. he got a couple but of days before, <laughs> oh but. My goodness. It is very hard to read. See, this is very small. Um, yeah, just oh take another chapter. Goodness. So it's like, yeah, it's it's not so easy to read. Oh my so, goodness! But he prepared it and and he really um, did that in a couple of days and played it with me yesterday. That is so amazing. And he's but he's also the one, for example, who played I'll with Barbara Hannigan the piece yeah. Hans composed for her. Put it back here. It's ruining our decoration here, so we Sorry. have to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, but he, he knows what to, to play and he yeah. knows how to reduce and yeah. Yeah, he finds out what rhythm is necessary for you to get through. Someone's just asked, um, Annika asked, what is your favorite modern horn concerto? Oh, actually I actually don't have one because they are they're all very, very different and, and I think they, that is the quality. Yeah. If you have a lot of different things, yeah. it's like fantastic. If you, I'm always looking forward to play Ligeti concerto. Even if it ruins your the face. The tutti horns aren't. The tutti are, <laughs> they are. The four tutti horns are only oh hand horns and really on open. If any of you don't know horns. that, the tutti horns in the orchestra for the Ligeti concerto. Oh my goodness! Every one is in a different key on natural horns, and it's and not corrected. And not corrected. Yeah, so yeah. the audience basically thinks that we're bad because we're playing out of tune. Yeah, but if it, it is a very very natural <laughs> feeling, even if they're sort of like on quarter <laughs> tones and things, it's, it sounds really natural. Vicky's asked, what is the most, most important thing for Stefan to prepare for playing a new modern piece, to prepare for it? Because um, you don't have a recording you can listen to. No, I think, I think first of all, of course, you have, to, you have to practice the technical material. That is, that is very important. Then you have to put it in context with the tempi, what is um, sometimes very difficult because you have you were showing me on your on your metronome that yeah. the, your metronome app does like it's subdivided. What was that? You yeah, were um, to? yeah. I only found found out a couple of days ago that my my uh, metronome app actually has a polyrhythmic function, so I can put seven over four. Oh, 
Okay. That's but really helpful. Yeah, but <laughs> if even if you don't understand what it's about now, but um, if you have like seven over four, you will find out that helps. And you've got those sorry, fast sorry, yeah. ones too. Off. <laughs> Off. But that's actually really useful for these crazy pieces. It is. It's very useful. Yeah. yeah. So that you 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 know about how to put your layer of notes on the normal bead. Hugo's watching. He brought us the M and M's. Thank you, Hugo. Oh yeah. Thank you. All right, all your M and M's. Thank you, Hugo. Very nice. Um, don't worry. Um, Jacob Dean says, "How often do the composer and the performer meet before the piece gets performed?" I love these questions because they're really—it's really interesting, also for me to to because mm -hmm. to, to these I see these scores hanging around in the in the horn room, and I just yeah. think you, you don't even know where to begin. No, basically, what you usually have if you if you meet a composer and say, oh, "Do you want to write a horn concert?" He says, "No." Uh, no, he says, "Yes." So the next meeting will be whenever he wants to start to write the concerto because he has interest in knowing and learning about the horn. Even Hans, who even was a horn player, said, yeah, let's meet and then I have more ideas and, you know, just sit together. I remember together. meeting with Wolfgang Riem as well. Wolfgang Riem, yes. Same sort yes. of thing you same to know sort of thing. About. Yeah, also with Toshio. Yeah. It is very important to meet them first and then they have questions about the instrument, what to do, what can you do, how does this sound, this sound, this sound. And then you meet again after a while and then, but actually with Hans, I only met him then after most of it was already done. So He's a horn player, I guess, so that, a that's player. a little yeah, that's a bit, bit different. different. Um, but also the same with Wolfgang. Wolfgang wrote the whole concerto like in a, yeah, in a flow. <laughs> yes, a you flow. played it in but, a flow. <laughs> yeah, but, but when, I, when it came, it, it looked like, yeah, it's all playable. Yeah, well, it is for you. that's the thing. I mean, you're very modest, but if a composer comes to you and says, can you do that? You say yes, but the us normal mortals, um, the other thing that's really Im impressive is that um, for me as a low horn player, all your concertos have really low notes in them. Yes, sure. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for example, the, the Riem concerto has this very slow, soft cadenza, what comes from high C to the very lowest D and I, a very small. Like, I was so proud of you. And it's so concert. soft yeah. and you're very alone. It's yeah. like, oh, it feels, yeah, after most of the piece is done. Yeah. I tell all my students, I use you as an example, all my master classes, that the best principal horns always warm up in the low range as well. You practice the low range every day. Andrew Bain plays low range. I mean, they, 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 you all do because it's important. Yeah, I think yeah, it makes your sound also better. Amen. Low horn tricks. Um, F. Horn Patrick, um, who's a great supporter of the Horn Hangouts, thank you, Patrick. He wanted to know, do you think younger sh students should be investing more time into learning modern pieces? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. I'm glad you said do you that. Need, do you need <laughs> to know why? Yes, tell us why. No, the thing is, um, when, I was, when I was quite early in my studies, I, I became a member of the Junge Deutsche Philharmonie. The German The youth German student, 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 student Youth Orchestra. Orchestra. Yeah. We have two, uh, the ones that are the pupils up to 18, yeah. 19, and then Junge Deutsche Philharmonie is over 19. Or when you study, I was 17. Um, and then they, they had the Ensemble Moderne at that time, it was like only two or three years old or four years old. And they asked me to play a gig with them and like a couple of concerts. And I was really, we have I, did, picture, I have not played. We have a picture of you doing the Frank Zappa gig about 100 years ago. When was that? It was oh, 30 years 30 ago. 30 years ago. Um, really, really cute picture of you next to Wolfgang, the bass clarinet player yeah. playing the saxophone. And you look so sweet. And about, it was about, about that age, right? When they asked that you was, That younger. was later. That was like okay. maybe, that was right before I entered here. Okay. Yeah. But I played like from, from that time, from when I was 17, even if I was in Frankfurt Opera, very early with 19. I played because the, the Ensemble Modern was Frankfurt based or still Frankfurt based. I played the opera and I played a lot of concerts with the, with the ensemble. And rehearsing contemporary chamber music is something you can learn a lot. Yeah, there's nothing totally nothing uh, compared to an eight hour rehearsal day with the ensemble. And down. Peter Oertrush conducted. Yeah, and, and your brain goes <laughs> yeah. mental. And yeah. they take it so seriously. Yeah. And that's when you realize the genius of it. Yeah. You know, otherwise in orchestras, sometimes everyone is sort of the la ya ya. And it's not quite a fifth, a fifth against a seventh or whatever, but they do it exactly. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's more difficult in a bigger group, of course. Orchestra, contemporary music rehearsing with the orchestra is difficult because the, the attention spam with everybody having really, really, really difficult parts is different than an ensemble of maximum 13, 14, maybe 20 players. Yeah. But if you have yeah. five or six players or seven or even two or three, 
And that's, yeah, that's, this really gives you a lot of information, a lot of yeah, abilities. So it's good for the, I always found after a week with Ensemble Modern, it would be, it's good for my ears and it was also good for the chops. It somehow gives you good endurance. And someone, someone just asked, who just asked, they're going through so quickly. Um, someone uh, said, what kind of techniques, uh, Dee Grundy said, what kind of techniques would you practice when working on modern pieces, especially when you're working on endurance? Let's have a little bit of horn nerdiness now. We're loud, we're all... No, no, nerds. endurance, yes, for example, for Ligeti, Ligeti is not that hard in endurance, but it has, it's very high, goes to, to E flat a couple of times, and also in piano and loud. Um, yes, you need, you need to extend sometimes your range, and of course you won't do it for, for all, the, all the weeks of the, of the year, but you have to pick up a couple of weeks before, you have to pick the piece and go for it and see where are the difficulties. And then if you have, you know, high note endurance problems, then you should really be aware a couple of weeks before to, to do so. What's your favorite high endurance practice? Um, there's a couple, actually. Um, I mean, I can probably sing them by heart, but... <laughs> which one? Yeah, but also... Yes, please. Okay. We'd love that. We'd love that. So one is, of course, if you if you go up slowly. I can hear everybody in front of the camera going, ah, but it's really true. You showed me that one also for, for, for my recording when I was trying to build up strength that you don't build up in the orchestra when you're playing the horn. That one is a really good one. That and then the other one. The other uh, one? one? One other one that comes from high registers. A quint and I'm already tired go. by the time I get to about an A. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, but you're tired <laughs> when you get to the A for yeah. the first week, yeah. and then the second week yeah. the B, and then yeah. third week the the B, the C. So it's it's yeah, I have to build up slowly. The thing is, it's it's a bit like in sport. If you want to run ten kilometers in forty five minutes, you shouldn't start with ten kilometers in forty five minutes. Mm. You start with like running a kilometer fast and then walking a bit, running a kilometer fast and walking. Uh, that's the same thing. Speaking of running, we have a little I should, clip. I should run again? No, no, yes, no, no, you look you, amazing. You. Speaking no. of running, we have a little clip, thanks to the Digital <coughs> Concert Hall, who have let us um, use the clip of Toshio's piece, and, um, and of your famous non-concerto. We have uh, a non little... Non-concerto. Non-concerto. Non non-concerto. Non 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 and it game. was by Richard... Eris. Eris. Wasn't quite sure how to pronounce it. And for me, that's the craziest thing I've seen you do, apart from not when you're not playing the horn. But <laughs> <laughs> we are not going to talk about no, this. No, no, we're not talking we about need that. A different we're talking about hangout for that. Um, hangover, so hangout. <laughs> hangover. No, 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 hang out. Um, we have we have a little clip of that, um, and I would like to show it to all. If you haven't seen it, it's on the digital concert hall. You have to see this whole concerto. This is what we're talking about. This needs a different preparation, I have to say. That's not only high notes, it's also mountain running. So it was incredible. And shoes and everything, yeah. Did yeah. you meet him? Did you talk about this? Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. he's, he's living in Amsterdam and um, he's, he's writing It was quite a funky things. piece, though. You know, when you came out of that door, yeah. door came out of the door, get it? Oh, yeah. sorry. Um, you came out of the door, everyone laughed, and then you played this... This yeah, really sort yeah, of funky yeah, bit, uh, hand uh, stop yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very nice. Everybody plays lo lovely, politely, 
and you open the door like a jack in the box. Jack of the box? Jack, jack in the box. Jack in the box, and you yeah. open it and say, like, <laughs> <laughs> really nasty, loud. So like, yeah. Really, it was very, very funny. Yeah. It, was, it was great. But then you had to do a different sort of preparation because you literally had, you had to be quite fit because otherwise you would have been out of breath. I couldn't have run up and down. You, you were like running up a ramp. And then you were yeah, there's two ramps, yeah. like a meter something. It has to be like eight meter, t eight to ten meters in between. So you really run a lot yeah. because you play your own echo. You play open on the one side, and then you run to play your own echo on the other side, and it gets faster and faster. And the time in between gets shorter and shorter. And at some point, he just doesn't write the echo, and you, you, he writes that you're wrong. So you 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 end there and just yeah. look at the connector. You don't play, so you run back play the echo where you play the real thing. It's hilarious. You and have it's to getting watch shorter it, and shorter. It's really like crazy. If you haven't seen, yeah. it, you have to watch that. That's on the digital concert hall. In in non non -shato. non chato non chato. That's a good. And so not secure, what happens? Is it happened that you've gotten a score or something? You've had to play a new thing and have thought up this ream moment. Uh, no, Wolfgang's, Wolfgang's piece is very ton like tonal written. Yeah. There was a, another concerto by, by Lopez, and that was mostly graphic, and but graphic <coughs> with like half stop to stop to open in different registers, so it <gasps> sounded like wow, <laughs> really really exciting piece, really exciting piece. But the piece was forty seven minutes. Oh. And I only performed once the first movement, it's two movements, because we didn't have the time to rehearse it properly. So, and also I wouldn't have had the lip to, to play the whole thing. Well, when we got the Lachemann, we, there weren't practically no notes in there at all, was there? We have a nice picture of us performing the Lachemann eight horn concerto, but it wasn't much horn playing in there. Yeah, it was at the beginning and then it turned into the Lachemann moments, into his melodies. Yeah, we had these six different vocal. <laughs> You were very good. I must say, to be perfectly honest, we got the music. We were like, ah, yeah, okay. We go, <laughs> and you sat us down in the rehearsal and said, no, you're going, <laughs> and you're going, <laughs> and you're going. <laughs> it was really, and then when we did that, then, yeah, then it worked. Yeah, then it worked. All, yeah, no, it only worked. <laughs> all the things yeah. only work if you, if you, yeah, prepare them properly. Um, there's, uh, Luke Seiler said, does anyone compose modern horn pieces for young students, similar to those from the Paris Conservatoire years ago? That would be something we need. If anyone's watching... I don't know, I don't know if they'd still do it at the Paris uh, Conservatoire. I don't think so. Uh, it would be really good to have like a, a, a piece every year from a different composer yeah. for people that, yeah. Mm -hmm. like On the in back the studies, there is the concert etude by Salonen. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that is... Paula's, Paula's working on that one right now. She can play it now. Yeah, you can Paula play it for us right. live on the internet. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we need those sort of pieces. The Vern Reynolds studies and the... Of course, there's the, the, yeah. the yeah, you have the studies yeah. that you should, you should prepare. They're not really performing pieces. Yeah. yeah. There's a good question. Mo Mozart, isn't it Mozart's birthday today? Is it no, today? is it? Is it some, it's sometime around now. Yes, is um, it 29th anyway, today? Yeah, tw no, it's the 27th. Oh, no, it's 29th. Anyway, whatever. Is it Mozart's birthday today? Tell us. Somebody can tell us. I think it's somewhere. It's Give me, let me have a look. I can, I can have a look. It's my calendar. It's on your phone calendar. during a horn it's hangout. My, yeah, I know. <laughs> Just showing things. <laughs> um, while I do, I'm going to ask you a ask well, question. Mozart Domingo. It is today, actually. It's today. Yes. Happy birthday, Mozart. I no. only know it because it's Emmanuel Pau's birthday. That's too. right. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday Emmanuel, Emmanuel, if you're watching. <laughs> um, I wonder what Mozart would have thought of all this. What do you think? He would, have, he would have loved the modern day horn. Oh, actually, there's a little quote in that piece. Ah. I have to say. In, at in the, the very Ab end, in the Abrahamson. You know what? I missed it. You miss it? You missed the end? I don't know. Okay. I didn't miss the end. I was trying oh. to, f I was probably lost. Aha. Uh -huh. Very good. Da -da 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 -da. It comes again and ends with it. Ah, I, I didn't actually. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I missed that one, but I'm very happy we did that on Mozart's birthday today. Yes. Okay. Um, actually, I've got something very, very nice for you all. Um, Stefan and I have a present for you. The Digital Concert Hall has given us a free pass for the concert on, it's going to be Friday, Friday night. For the live performance. At 8 o'clock, Friday night, 8 p.m. We have a voucher code that if you're watching the archive, it won't be valid anymore. It's only valid on Friday. It's valid for 48 hours. And Tim, handsome Tim in Melbourne, is going to put the code in it's basically Stefan 22 in all in big letters and if you if you log into the digital console hall with that you can watch his concert for free and you can hear the Mozart quote at the end isn't that nice very nice yeah thank you digital there's console. actually more quotes of different Hong Kong judges in there where I want to know no I can't no, no. you can't I'm you're not, not, you're not allowed to tell me not to. Yeah, I mean yeah. I could play a bit yeah yeah play, I want to hear you put it. some this things is really a just premium. to say this yeah, is please. things please, are please. on natural harmonics yeah. Ah. 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 
Anybody know what of that was? That is, um, Anybody know what that was? Tell us. Yeah. That I didn't. Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, when we, we, where you're standing, no. you're playing out to the audience, so we're, yeah, we're today counting in notes. And also, if you count notes and have to play your concert on your own, you can't really listen to me. No, so that's, uh, but yeah. I promised Hans that I would play. Yeah, there was a there was one bit where the clarinet st section started howling like lucky. They're going oop, oop. Oop, that is not a quote. I that's think. not a quote. <laughs> They're not quoting. Um, oh, uh, Caroline saying, "Impatient to see you in Mulhaus." Carl says, greetings from the Philippines, the orchestra of the Filipino youth. That's so nice. Aki says hello from Helsinki. He wants to know what your favorite horn solo is. And please come as a soloist. So what's your favorite horn solo? Oh, God. The next one. The next it's one. always the next one. No, I always just played Bruckner 4, and I think that's one of my favorite symphonies. But uh, favorite horn solo, no, I don't have one. No, just, there's no, the whole so repertoire. Many. It depends yeah. on what you're sort of, yeah. Brahms yeah. 3 to Leuvenspiegel, Heldenleben. Oh, a lot this, of them. Yeah. yeah, you've got them all. Um, Ali said, that speaking of young horn players, a shout out to all the young horn players who can't watch because they're at school. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. They'll watch the archive. Strauss 2. Well done, Simon. Strauss 2. That's right. It was Strauss 2. Um, if you're watching on, um, on the website, you can send us your questions here. I will see them. If you're watching live on Facebook, write in and tell us where you're watching from. But the questions we only see here. So get over to the website and get your questions in for, for Stefan. Um, Anais is watching. Guapos, you look great. Oh, thank Hola, you. Hola, Anais. Anais used to be our, our academist. Oh, academist. We've had some great academists. Um, there is a question from Japan. Stefan, do you like Japanese composers' pieces and what do you like about it? Well, Hosokawa. Well, definitely I do like Toshio's, Toshio Hosokawa's piece and I've performed it quite a lot of times, I have to say. Yeah. I don't know if, there, if you can really define a national composing style in contemporary music. Uh, of course, there's directions in, in like Hans Abrahamsen's piece. I, don't, I wouldn't... I wouldn't say it's a Danish piece or it's a Japanese piece, but of course it has to do like Toshio's piece is the this blossoming of the lotus flower, mm. um, and it has a very calm beginning and it goes to to the storm over the pond and. Um, I love that piece. I must say, we're it's very very colorful. You and I, uh, very nice. We're yeah. up the back, yeah. you know. I think they just saw it in the clip as yeah. well. It ended with a picture of the offstage yeah. horns up in the back. It has it. these nice nice wind chimes yeah. that that sort of like if this little. That's very Japanese. This, that's very Japanese. Yeah. That's a lot. So yeah. no, that, that that's that's gorgeous. Um, how do you engage an audience when you perform modern pieces? As audiences tend to lead lean toward pieces from a later er era. I mean, that's it depends on which audiences you're playing for. Yes, the thing is, of course, if you take the piece very serious, then you and you perform it very serious, then the, the audience will will try to listen because you 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 have to, yeah, you have to show that you this is important. This is important for you, and of course, it's important for the composer, definitely. Mm. And and then it gets important for the people listening. It is it is something you have to work with a lot of tension, body mm. tension, tension in appearance. If you like pl trying to just side read it on, and play like, no, no, yeah, no, that no. doesn't work. No, no, you mean you mean very active sort of. You know, yeah, yeah, being there. You know, yeah. Yeah, being I present. must say, in the Lachman, I did know I was sitting. You and I were right on the ends, mm -hmm. and I did notice quite a lot of sort of giggling going on at stages in the audience because they they weren't quite sure they'd come to hear a concerto for eight horns, and we were basically for a lot of it. Ch -ch 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 down our, and they, that's hard for people to sort of grasp. Yes, and it was very long. It is a 40, 40 minute piece. <laughs> but I have to say, um, Simon, Simon and the orchestra took it so serious, and we of course did, that the giggling was quite at the beginning when we started mm -hmm. <laughs> all these noises without, without the horn, just the mouthpiece in the air. And then, but then of, of course there, there are some, some things where you are, were allowed to giggle too. Yeah, yeah. So he really composed yeah. like funny bits into yeah, it. So. He, no, he really did. So this... <laughs> I was passed out at that bit. Yeah, There's yeah, it's, the, it's yeah. really hard. We've yeah. got some really good horn stuff on the digital concert hall. There's Absolutely, some really good stuff to watch. There's the Schumann Concertstück as well, which seems yeah. terribly old-fashioned. Um, David from the Guild Hall. Hello, David. He wants to know how you manage to balance the solo and orchestral career with practice and teaching. It, uh, you don't. He's asked, "What do you do? What do you do in your free time?" You don't have much free time, and if you are, you have to walk lucky. <laughs> At the moment, that's a bit right. Yes, it feels like, like um, yes, good morning. Oh, there's a dog. <laughs> Walk me. And then come after first rehearsal home, run home and go out with him again. Um, yes, yes. 
I need some holidays. Yeah. Yeah. Join the club. <laughs> I tell you. Should we just February? I have a week in February. Me too. Yes. It's, it's probably the same week. Yeah. We Ooh. all have that week off. So yeah. Lovely. No, it's all the first. I have the last. But it is quite hard to balance that because, like you and I both, when we're not doing our stuff, we're here, and mm -hmm. when we're free from here. We, we are then doing our, our other things. So everything is always based on what's coming next. And it's, there's no, it doesn't seem to be much time to just go, ah, because the horn player is already, always thinking about chops and have I practiced enough for this? No, not chops. you? Chops. Chops. You just always have chops. Mm. <laughs> yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. somewhere. Um, Lauren asks, Stefan, do you incorporate vibrato into your playing? Interesting sure. question. I yeah. do. Tell yes. us when and where. Not so much in the orchestra, but I heard it today. For example, today, yeah. the very first bit is like only like 12 bars. It is, it is the 12 bars. There's a gen just like a general pause, canal pause. And then there's another 14 Femme bars, marker. canal pause. Yeah. So it's like in three blocks, the first movement. Yeah. The, first, the first bits shouldn't be with vibrato, and the second bits should be m with more vibrato. The third part is stopped, more or less. And of yes, I like vibrato. I thought you were I just like nervous. <laughs> Yeah, I'm yeah having the nervous <laughs> about yeah, right. No, no, it is it is meant to be there. Yeah. It is. Um, <laughs> the thing you, is, I, do, I do, do play it? with vibrato, um, yeah. but it is not permanent. No, I just use it when I really want it. And would you use it in another concerto, in a sort of romantic concerto, sure. or you would? Well, you wouldn't use it in the orchestra so much, would you? Or would you? Oh, um, yeah, Tchaikovsky Five has to live. You put it in Tchaikovsky Five. I haven't played Tchaikovsky Five for you a long time. <laughs> I'll listen for that. No, Some people mean. play with vibrato all the time. The people that, that came yeah. from sort of the yeah. old, the former East, uh, Eastern Bloc, they were brought up with that. Yeah. My old more, colleagues more at than the, we the Staatsoper, they played all with yeah. vibrato yeah. and they could do amazing circular breathing. They, yeah, they I can do that on a couple of notes, but <laughs> most of the notes don't work with me. <laughs> you no, know, I know the feeling. Um, Chiaki asks, is it, isn't, is it possible to have a modern concert for natural horn? Is any composer interested in natural horn anymore? This was, I was going to ask a, a question similar. It's like, haven't we had enough of all this natural horn stuff? Because every composer seems to put natural harmonics into the, into the piece which we understand, but the audience often doesn't. I think the, the, horn, the horn natural harmonics are an ideal thing to put in because they give a different color. Yeah? They are out of tune, out of our listening, mm. like, yeah, used tune. But they sound so natural that they they don't they, yeah they sound different, mm. but it's so natural. I mean, Ligeti Ligeti in Ligeti Concerto you have two movements on the natural horn, and then you have this solo piece between third third and fourth movement. It's like yes, and uses all the natural harmonics but on different keys. I think the, the biggest problem if you use the natural horn you're always only having one tonality and then you have to change the bow for the I next I mean the tonality. natural horn was not invented for to no. play modern music on it no. but the modern composers seem to really enjoy like here you yeah. have uh, in the in in this new if you've just joined us yeah, yeah, I just we are we are looking at Stefan's premiere for this week um, the Hans Abrahamson's concerto for horn it's an absolute premiere and we're getting a sneak peek at it um, lucky us but there's some there's Yeah if some you can if you listen yeah. He writes exactly which finger you use for which which um, note. We have note. that in our parts you too. You have that in yeah. your parts too, and that gives that gives the the tonal the tones the natural tones always lead to to somewhere, mm -hmm. and he uses this, and I think mm -hmm. it's very beautiful. Yeah, I mean, especially as he stole it from Strauss, mate. Yeah, he hey. just. <laughs> he just transformed straws into our arms, that's, <laughs> that's right. It. Um, nice question from Matthew. Hi, Matthew Hyslip. Um, he says, which living composers would you like to see a concerto from? Brett Dean. Yes. Um, we oh, have there's an a couple octet. Of, there's a couple of others um, I would love to Are you have. working on it? Yeah, of course I'm working on it. I would like John Williams to write another concerto for low horn. I told him that already. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see if he obliges. I'm not quite sure. No, I'm, I'm very happy that I do have a couple of new things coming up, so that's good. Can you tell us? Yeah, Isidor Azebelian from Serbia is writing a concerto in two years' time. Wow. 
and she's she's I, I think she's a very good composer. She did write an octet for our octet, like Schubert octet. Yeah. Um, it's an eight-minute piece, very very difficult, like um, and it has a bit of folk music. You've seen in it, it already. Oh no, that was the octet. Ah, the, 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 octet. The, the, the horn concert is not composed. Yet. Okay, oh, good. Uh, un amical bonjour de Paris à tous les connus présents. There we go. Merci Thank bien. you from Valta. Um, <laughs> hi from Bolivia. And she would like to know, Anita, how many hours in a row is it good to practice? Oh, practicing. Yeah, the thing is, if you practice like, especially contemporary music, it is very hard to say, oh, I need to practice eight hours. Is it, I mean, it's like eight yeah. hours of horn practice. <laughs> sure. I mean, but you have to, yeah, you have to have a system of practicing. Mm -hmm. The thing is, you have to, for example, if you practice, um, sorry, just no, no, no. Uh, for for example, the runs at the big that I played at the beginning, they're quite late in the piece. You hear that they are not really diatonic or they are not really regular. They're also, hard. he uses two, two, three, three, four, four, yeah. five, five, but they are not. They are not rhythmically written on this. Rhythmically, it is. So you have to first break that down to to smaller parts, smaller bits. So if you just practice them backwards from the back, like the last five ones. At the the other five, and like this, <laughs> and you process them all the way to the beginning. That takes quite a while. That takes quite a while. So and that's it's not too demanding. You don't have no. to do it loud. All the practicing you do is always like, oh yeah. First of all, I have to figure out the into the intervals, and to play them right, then the rhythm, <coughs> make. At the beginning, do it all in a quite comfortable um, dynamic, mm. so that you don't really. Mm. Uh, for example, he writes like big things in fortissimo later. Well, careful, Jakob, it's going to be loud. Things like this. Um, I think yeah. you missed a note there. Yeah, I missed actually two, but I'm <laughs> I'm not warmed up. Okay. So, um, yeah, if you see this, like for like going for half a page yeah. or for a page. Yeah. Then of course you so will you practice it first to get it. So, but you would like do your basic stuff first, or would yes. you just start? You no, do, no, no. You I have your routine. I know your routine by heart. Um, we all know each other's routines. We 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 uh, we come to the horn room. We know already who's in there before Actually, we open the door. Actually, we can identify um, hotel room owners <laughs> exactly by, I know. by practicing. <laughs> Not only true. horn, clarinet, yeah. oboe. You know exactly who does what, and That's then you walk through the corridor and second say. Oh, this is him. This oh, is I him. didn't know this he was next him. to me. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But by the violas, I, I, I no, sometimes don't get no. it. But uh, but with the wind players, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, how long is your would be your routine be before you started working on a modern piece like this? It would be an hour, but I would also come back in between yeah. practicing this, like for two or three hours. I would always come back to little exercises that that reform my ambition. That was going to be my next question. Yeah, um, is, how do you protect? It's like really correcting everything you've blasted yeah. away. Yeah, yeah. So, so you like sometimes, what? yeah, just do sometimes some scales, two octave scales, and then. And this little one, you know, the one we, we like the. Yeah, yeah. That's some, a really some, good one. Yeah, some really like like fine control in the mouthpiece exercises that are without a lot of pressure. I can hear the communal sigh of, oh, wow. So that, just, no, yeah, that means you're in shape. For me, if I can do that, means you've got, you're, you've got, you've got good chops. Oh, yeah, otherwise, got, it, yeah, no, you've otherwise got it good was, chops right now. Yeah. That's good, because you've got a big, big premiere coming up this week. Um, if you've if just joined us for the big, prim, big premiere on Friday night, the Digital Concert Hall um, has given us all a voucher, especially for the Horn Hangout viewers, so that you can watch for free on Friday night, 8 o'clock. And the voucher, Tim, Handsome Tim in Melbourne will be putting the voucher code in here so it's only only valid for Friday night so if you're watching in the archive unfortunately you can't watch ah Tim's there he's put it in already um, Stefan H asks um, <coughs> do you have plans to do some modern concerto recordings um I'm I'm falling behind with recordings anyway. yeah I know you've got too many pieces and no, the, thing is, the thing else. is I haven't even recorded Strauss concertos and um, I haven't recorded I only recorded Toshio Hosokawa's piece yeah 
that is um, that is there on the market. Yeah. But the Wolfgang Riem isn't con isn't recorded. And I'm 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 a bit sad about this. Yeah. But the biggest problem nowadays is that you can't record any CDs anymore. Yeah. And especially for contemporary music, it's not very easy to money, yeah, find money, orchestra, money. Yeah. conductor, yeah. and yeah. <laughs> Greg Russo is watching in LA. Good morning, Greg. And he asked me what well, my favorite. early morning. Yeah, very it? early. But Good Greg morning. is great. And he always gets up early because he's got two dogs, two ah, new puppies, two amazing Hello. new dogs. Um, and he's asked me what my favorite bunt kick is. Greg, I'm coming back very soon and I will let you know so that you can buy me one. Uh, <laughs> Um, I just saw someone else that said, uh, Francois is watching. Hello, Francois. And um, Stefan, I must just say a couple of words. Uh, quite a few people have written in about Barry Tuckwell, who died um, last week. And uh, of course, the whole horn scene mourns him. He was an incredible talent. Yeah. Um, and a couple of people, Richard and Heidi, have asked if you have any, um, if you have any stories about him. Did you ever meet him? I'm, I've actually met him just half a year ago oh, in wow. Australia. He came to the concert I was uh, doing with it, and I'm the Australian National Academy, and I was very happy to see him. How was and he? How did oh, he? Oh, he was uh, he was walking on the stage, but he was very yeah, he's enjoying the concert, except of the contemporary piece, so much. He didn't like and that I, one. I didn't. Oh. Uh, yeah, we played the the uh, the Brett Dean for Eight Horns, but I think he didn't like that too he much. He should have. He's it's Australian. He should yes, and he did Australian. a lot. I mean, he influenced a lot of composers to yeah. write write yeah. um, Hong Kong So. And this, this is, of course, it's a big loss. For us. Yeah, a really big loss. Yeah. Um, but he, what he left behind was just incredible. Yeah. And my favorite story, I never met him. I tried mm. to get him to do a horn hangout and he was always, oh, well, we'll see. And then yeah, he, he could have only been in yeah. Australia. Sadly, it didn't happen. My favorite story, well, one of my favorite stories about him, he was a very funny guy. Mm. And um, he, uh, his very last concert, I think, was in Baltimore. And he played Mozart three. His very last concert as a soloist. And some friends of his, they drove miles and they got there and he said, Barry, we are here to hear your very last note. We we're so excited. And so he didn't play the very last note. He left it out. <laughs> it's a true story. Don't, don't. He left it. Yeah, he left it out. <laughs> and that it was, was very that, good. That, that was, was fantastic. He didn't want to play his last no. note. He didn't want it to be his last note. So he just left it out. No, that's good. It's no, a lovely no. story, yeah. isn't it? It's such a lovely story. Um, gosh, people are re really... Gustavo from Buenos Aires wants to know about breathing. Uh, eye ranges. Everyone wants to know everything. We're going to have to do another another. Uh, we do on our horn hang up on technique maybe. would be really, 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 really helpful. Um, we've been going. I, I know you have to. You guys have got meetings with uh, Pavo and Hans, and and you can't go all that long today. But you can have some more M and M's. No, I take them. I take them. I take them with you. They are bears. for you. Are the gummy bears? I like these. I think these are better. So Friday night. Well, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Excuse me. Um, what, how do you feel before you go out there, before a big piece like this? Um, this is one where I'll be a bit nervous because the, the beginning is very delicate. It's very slow. It's very, yeah, it is a lot of like... Listen, you know what? On the horn, the horn Hangout audience, there are thousands of horn players watching around the world and on Facebook. If you can play it now for us, you won't be nervous on Wednesday night for the premiere. The thing is, now I have to play uh, without any warm And with gummy bears well, in your mouth. With gummy bears in my... <laughs> This was just the first 12 bars, and then it comes back again, but with a lot of vibrato, <laughs> espressivo, and... <laughs> I know you're my colleague, and you're my friend, but I really do admire you quite a lot. And Please. I know I don't tell you often enough, because we always just talk about other stuff, but oh. I really admire you an awful lot. And that, that was just blimmin' incredible, that was. I can't swear because my mother's watching, but uh, that was really quite amazing. Your control is phenomenal. It's really phenomenal. What, what we always tell our students, we have this thing about never smiling when you play, ever, 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 and that for me was a pure example of why. You need the strength, but everything is forward, huh? Everything is focused it's forward and around. Yeah, it's in the inner control. It's, the in it's, yeah. it's here, isn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah. How would you describe that? <laughs> that noise that comes if you don't have it. <laughs> that's, like, that's like buzzing. It's like, sounds like M and M through the mouthpiece. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's an important <coughs> thing to have and to practice. It really is. Um, Nuri and Rudy and Mike, uh, Michael are watching in the Brass Academy of Cali hello. Alicante. Hello. Um, Yuki says hi. Sarah and Stefan. Jack Monicum says my daughter Julia says hello. Um, everyone's going on and on about that. Uh, the attack of the note gives Stefan goosebumps. The other, another Stefan. Um, Laurie Ann says you're one of the best horn players in the world. Oh, you're a ghost. Let's, let's take about attack. Of oh, attack. Um, just saying because people tend to have a lot of problems with this. I've played six months in this orchestra without attacking one single note with a tongue. Can you just explain that? I had a problem. I'm um, sorry, can you just repeat that? I didn't quite understand. I had it. a big problem. Did you, I couldn't. Did you have a problem? Oh, yeah, I had a lot of problems. I don't think uh, I was here at that no, time. No, you were not here at that okay. time. That was before, but no one realized. Uh, no. No, the good, that was the good thing. I even and played, the good thing is, not many could, people will Bruckner know now. 4. It's a big secret. Yeah, okay. I played Old Bruckner 4 without one tonguing. Because Except for the fast one. But you had the, the yeah. typical... I had this... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you were already here in the orchestra? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Mom I was working yeah. half a year with that, with that, without anybody noticing. That's scary as heck. Yeah, it was very scary. And, and it took me a while to get back to normal tonguing. And Brooklyn normal four breathing. with no tongue? Yeah. <sighs> so you literally played... I mean, of course, da 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 yeah, da yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work. You played for six months without a tongue and in the Berlin Philharmonic first horn. Okay, so what helps getting it back? Um, uh, television, loud <laughs> television and metronome. Oh, okay. So both at the same time. Both at the same time, so, same that, you time. Don't, you, so that you weren't listening really you to You don't listen to yourself okay. and you just do stupid exercises like counting yourself in one, two. And what actually did help more was the thinking of before breathing in, breathing out. Okay. So that you have a real like, yeah. Ta. If you do it without the television, you get mad. Yeah. You get really crazy and so. But it's it is. It took me a while. Yeah, yeah. it took me like a couple of months. Wow. And that was only one no of the idea. problems. I had, I had another problem, and the other problem was like, um, the other problem was like I I didn't have any high register anymore after a tour with Mahler two and Brahms one because Brahms one is quite low. Sorry, I am listening. <laughs> Come here. Come here. So have a look. Uh, this is the horn hangout mascot. I am lucky. Hello, you little I'm lucky. We have to pay attention that he doesn't eat M&Ms. They're not all loud chocolate. Hello, lucky. Lucky, come here. Look. I don't know if the camera can even get you. This is lucky. Can you say, say hello? Say hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> You've got a horn hangout shirt. Well, I said horn hangout shirt. I even don't have one. Um, of course you're going to get one. We have them now packed and really nice. You get a horn hangout hang out, hang out shirt. Look what Lucky gets. I'm not sure if that is. We, we, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe well, I, think you can, I need a two weeks. Well, then, the, then Lucky's got it on right now. Oh, okay, take Lucky. But look yeah, what I've, I've got. got. All the hair. I heard that Lucky. Uh, oh, okay. If you see this, Lucky. <laughs> Yeah, he would oh, kill. Oh wait, hang on. He would oh, kill oh, for bananas. Oh, and I for the gummy bears. Oh no! <laughs> I hope he doesn't get all the gummy bears. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's right. going to eat all the gummy bears now. Sorry. Half a banana is enough. Okay. The other <laughs> half is for Sarah. <laughs> because bananas are very good for you. Well, but the other half's for me. He doesn't get any more. Oh, he's going to. No, half a, half a banana is enough. Otherwise, his poo would get. No, oh, thank you. Thing. That's right. Can yeah, I? Yeah, they got lucky hair. Can I give him a bit of banana? Come a little bit of banana. A little even, bit. Of, that's fine. Lucky, look, look, look. You can sit, sit, sit. Good boy. Oh, you're such, you're such a good boy. You're such a good boy. I love what I love about Lucky is when he wags his tail. Well, I guess now the whole horn hangout shirt is. That's hilarious. Friend. The whole horn hangout T-shirt is wagging. Mm. <laughs> You're such a good boy. Yes, he is. Um, sorry, everybody. We um, we 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 wanted to surprise Stefan, and and also you you all know Lucky. He's the most famous dog in in horn history. Um, would he would he sing for us? I'll see. Lucky sit. Lucky sit. sit. Okay. Let me pull up your shirt here. <laughs> But he's 
wagging his tail the whole time. He, he likes it. He likes it. He doesn't go away, so he's staying with me. So he's exactly. like if he suffering together is the best thing. <laughs> oh, Stefan, thank you so much. It's been an amazing. There have been so many people writing in. Um, yeah, someone just wrote, there are never two horn hangouts the same. This is very true. Um, thank you to uh, Musique Alexander, Gebruder Alexander, because thank they... Thank you, Philip. They spo thank you, Philip. Thank you, Philip. Um, they sponsored the horn hangouts and um, thank you to my team here, Chris, Jakob, George. Thank you. Thank you to Paula for the tea. Thank you for Tabitha for bringing Lucky. Thank you to Hans and Tim in Melbourne for the stream. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, everybody's writing in the most incredible hangout. I'm going to teach my dog to play the trumpet. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And I well, absolutely thank you so much. I'm, it's such an honor that you came on today. My pleasure. And toy, thank toy, you toy, toy. For having me. For, um, for, but now you've played live uh, on the Hangouts, so the digital concert hall will be no problem. No, oh, let's see, let's see. Don't forget to tune in on Friday night, 8 p.m. with your, new, your voucher code, which means you can watch for 48 hours. You can watch free and you can um, watch Stefan premiere the, uh, the concerto. Yeah. I won't be able to answer questions at that point. No, at that point, you'll be a little bit busy. Yeah. If anyone's wondering what this noise is, it's Lucky's tail uh, hitting, the <laughs> hitting the side of the chair. Bye. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Stefan. Bye. Vielen Thank you. Dank. My <laughs> pleasure. Have an imminent. Bye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Hello.